kinds of dreams and nightmares get captured on the big screen. The mummy. Is it dead or alive? Ah! For much of the 20th century, these dreams were filmed with movie cameras. But like color replacing black and white, the computer is Hollywood's new dream machine. Gary Demos is one of the pioneers of computer-generated imagery. Moviegoers take his work for granted. But much of what we see today wouldn't exist without Gary's imagination and his computerized toolkit. So the computer graphics, I think, was really the creation of a new medium. Uh, I, I didn't view it as something that would replace models or replace animation. I viewed it as a new storytelling medium. When Gary began his journey, the medium was as primitive as the toolkits. Computers were extremely crude. Uh, one megabyte was a refrigerator. <laughs> it was huge. Took a lot of power, uh, cost a lot of money. Uh, the, the computers were extremely crude by today's standards. But we got the best we could. We often built equipment to uh, get what we needed because you can't just program a computer that doesn't have any imaging output. You can't program a computer that can't record on film and get anything useful out to deliver to a movie. The first computer graphics were the equivalent of digital cave drawings. They were very crude surfaces. They were very low resolution. <laughs> the color was poor. I mean, everything was about them was, was very early. The computer, someone might have guessed in 1950, was going to change film. No one did. Computers changed almost every machine we use because it's become the controlling force in them. It's become the brain in them. It's become the brain in film. But the brains in computers get their smarts from people like Gary Demos, an artist and scientist who dreamed big. This is a, an unusual prototype. We knew the potential was there to do entire movies. We also knew the potential that was there to do entire animated three-dimensional movies. I became real fascinated with uh, the potential of going to very high resolution and very high scene complexity at a time when everybody was just struggling to make anything at low resolution with any detail at all. This uh, teapot was well known in the early days of computer graphics as a good test object. People like Gary Demos began to see in their heads, in theory, in, in math, and in the and what they could do with a computer 30 years ago. Hey, 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 it's the big master control program everybody's been talking about. That it might be possible to program a computer with very basic imagery of you. Taken prisoner and held captive within the digital world of the computer itself. And then create a new you that looked like you, but actually would be doing and saying things that you had never done. And that's exactly what Gary did when his first big feature hit the screen in 1976. Future World was one of the first films to use computer graphics, animating Peter Fonda's head. So it was high resolution even though it was 1976, so that was the first time we've really gotten to high resolution. But this is the makeup on Peter Fonda. We projected grids on him. Gary's work began to catch the attention of one of Hollywood's biggest filmmakers. Uh, we did this test for George Lucas in 1978 of the X-Wing. 77 was when the original Star Wars came out, because I don't think people had conceived of the computer as doing much more than making lines on screens on the set. But we knew that uh, detailed models could be made and they could be uh, rendered in high resolution. Gary's work on the 1984 sci-fi feature, The Last Starfighter, was a landmark evolution for computer graphics. He proved that you didn't need to build miniatures. It could all be done in the computer with extremely high resolutions. The Last Starfighter and 1982's Tron pointed the way forward for an entire industry. Although we worked on movies before that, that's when people began to see computers as uh, strong movie-making tools. I think from that point on, the, the industry began to form on its own. Computer generation begins with very big effects, like cities that have not actually been built, armies that are not actually being paid for. But as it becomes more sophisticated, and it becomes more sophisticated by the month, 
And we're talking here about an art that is being more intensely pursued than probably any other art in film. Because of Gary's pioneering work, computer-generated imagery is now an essential filmmaking tool, arguably as necessary as the camera or the microphone. I don't think people care much about how things are made. What they care about is the quality of what they're seeing. If you have an animated character that's not very expressive, I think people are going to begin to notice that, and it's going to jump off the screen at them. And if you have one that's very expressive and expressing subtle performance, I think people are going to appreciate that. What's clear, I think, with a person like Gary Demos is that here is a man who really, in his upbringing and his training, has nothing to do with show business or the movies. He's a mathematician. But it's possible that his breakthrough, his findings, and more than possible, is going to affect the medium as much as anything since it began. <laughs>